everyone. Welcome to another episode of From the Practice Room. We're Hi. back with you guys here. I am currently going through journalism boot camp, guys. And when I say boot camp, I mean boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I've been, yes, I've been going, I've been scheduling interviews, thinking about interviews, transcribing interviews. It's been quite a lot. What have you been up to, Mindy? Anything interesting or exciting lately? Not really, except that I have officially decided to completely move back to the Bay Area. So I'm going to LA at the end of the week to officially move out, which is really sad. Oh, your last suit from the past six years. I know. It's it's crazy. But yeah, I'm I'm also just excited to get all my things back <laughs> because like I've been living off because when I came home before quarantine started, I was only expecting to be here for a week and then everything shut down. So I only brought back like a week, a week's worth of like things like clothes and everything. So most my of my gosh, things are, are you living? Mindy? Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I'm just excited to kind of get all my things back, although it's going to be very bittersweet. But yeah, I know. there's that. I've been going out a little more of course safely wearing my mask and everything but mainly just to go on walks and uh, we went on a couple hikes which is pretty nice so yeah it's been it's been good awesome i have a yeah. random question actually just mm -hmm. to start off today because i think the people would really like to know some random facts <laughs> <laughs> but um I just want to know, Mindy, if you were able to go back to L.A. right now and there was no coronavirus, what is the first thing that you would do? Oh, my goodness. But like by myself or like who am I with? You can be with anyone that you want. Just anything. Honestly, like. I think it would have something to do with food for sure. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I just, LA has such good food. I just miss eating, like, eating out. And, like, mm -hmm. one main thing is, like, getting sushi. I haven't had sushi in a long time. Like, raw fish. But mm. for sure, yeah. That is something related to food. <laughs> you knew it. You knew it. <laughs> Why? I what what would me, you want to do? Um, I was thinking about this a lot and I was like I honestly really miss the core power yoga studio Aww, over there and yeah. I think I would just love to go take a yoga class and then go get brunch because Aww. I love brunch so food yeah, as well yeah, yeah it's weird because like it just it seems so foreign like the thought like when you asked me that I was just like I can't even imagine it right now <gasps> it's Same. so sad I don't know when the next time we'll get to go to Los Angeles for real yeah. anywho the school year is coming up for some people. Some people might be going into music school for the first time. Mm -hmm. Some people are just returning back to music school. Either way, college, we both feel, is truly a time to find yourself. Yeah. You might run into some things that you are maybe, I don't know, uncomfortable about, or you just mm -hmm. really, it's a time for you to really grow and to mm -hmm. find yourself. And so today, we kind of just want to talk about what we wish we knew about music school before we entered, some things that we learned. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just kind of our experiences, what music school is like, because I don't know about a lot of people, but for me personally, um, you know, I didn't know what a music school was like at all prior to mm -hmm. entering college. Like, you know, you just have your private lessons and yeah. your educational school and you're completely thrown into a different environment. Mm -hmm. So I want to first start out by kind of talking about the difference between a university music program and a standalone mm -hmm. conservatory. And mm -hmm. we both attended um, university music schools, so mm -hmm. we can't speak too much about the standalone conservatories, mm -hmm. um, aside from, you know, like music festival experiences and mm -hmm. such um, and experiences we've heard from other people. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of hear your thoughts on what you think about a university music school versus standalone conservatory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, I mean, I can't speak too much uh, for the conserv conservatory side because I didn't attend a conservatory, but I can talk about kind of why I decided to go to a university yeah, go for it. Uh, music school instead of a conservatory. Um, I think actually like for most of high school, I wanted to go to a conservatory just because 
I knew that I wanted to do music and I figured that that might be the best environment for me. Um, totally but actually, more. yeah, but actually I, I, um, completely, um, I'm glad that I decided to go to u- university because being at a university really allows you to kind of, um, explore other things too, even though like, like for me, I really, you know, I always knew that I wanted to do music. Um, but even just to f- like allow yourself and have that freedom to, um, explore other things, for example, um, actually like some of the, my favorite classes that I've taken, uh, at UCLA, um, were not in the music department. Um, yeah, same, same here. Yeah. And there's some really interesting classes that you can take and just, you know, allowing yourself to kind of expand uh, your borders and, you know, be open minded to different things. Um, for some time, I was actually pursuing a cognitive science minor. I was really mm-hmm. into psychology and cognitive science, and that taught me so many different things. Um, and yeah, I think the main thing um, is basically you're also surrounded by uh, so many different people, you know, people that study different things, people that are interested in different things. And yeah, for um sure. For me, yeah, I just feel that um, I learned a lot from my environment and just people around me. Um, And it's kind of nice. Like, I love, you know, hanging around music students all the time. And, you know, it's it's nice to be able to talk about things that other people understand, like Mm -hmm. other music students understand as well and relate to. But sometimes it's kind of like a breath of fresh air uh, (laughs) to be able to step out of that kind of environment, but still be on the same campus, you know. And to be able to talk to people uh, that have different interests and uh, have knowledge about so many different things, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, I completely agree. I also, when I was in high school, I kind of was thinking that I wanted to attend more of a conservatory, but I -hmm. I don't regret anything one bit. I really, really value my time at, um, well, I mean, both schools that I attended and that I'm attending now are uh, music schools within a university and it's given me so many uh great opportunities that i don't know if i would have been able to have otherwise like i was mm-hmm. able to um discover that i kind of wanted to pursue a double major in both mm-hmm. schools um it led me to what i'm doing now like arts journalism mm-hmm. and um i think there are so many different clubs and organizations that yeah. honestly i kind of wish i had taken more advantage of like when mm-hmm. i was an undergrad um i did um, muster up the courage to um, work for the Daily Bruin yeah. at UCLA, which honestly I was thinking about since freshman year, but I only um, actually decided to do it when I became a junior. And mm-hmm. I really advise that for people, if they have certain chances to really just go for them and to go mm-hmm, after mm-hmm. Uh, various interests. Yeah. And um, yeah, like you were saying, some of the best classes that I took at UCLA were outside of the music um, mm-hmm. department. For example, I took this history of documentary film, which to this day I think about. And there were just so ma- like it doesn't sound that interesting history yeah. of documentary film, but we we watched so many interesting, fascinating, inspiring documentaries. And mm-hmm. um, I just love that class. It was a yeah. six unit class, which for anyone who knows and understands units at UCLA, yeah. that it's a lot of units. It's considered um, a lot, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was able to take a class like that, um, a public speaking class, this mm-hmm. class where we uh, debated on journalism ethics. Uh, mm. Very, very interesting classes. What are some of the interesting classes you've taken? Um, a lot of them were in psychology. Just like I, I just am fascinated with the mind mm-hmm. and how our mind works. Um, some I actually really enjoyed linguistics classes. I never thought oh, yeah, that I'd be into linguistics. Yeah, but um there are a couple linguistics classes that i found like those are one of my favorite classes at ucla also i took this really interesting like oceanography class sounds kind of lame and nerdy but it was like really interesting (laughs) that honestly sounds really cool yeah yeah it's just there's so many options like the options are literally endless and you can find you know just whatever you're you might be interested in um and yeah i think especially those undergrad years for sure Mm -hmm. um in my experience i think is like one of the best times for you to go out and explore different things not Mm -hmm. saying that you have to go into those fields or you know it's just good to to learn and i i love learning and so i think uh being at a university um was really good for me and i think i benefited a lot from that kind of setting 
Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I think, honestly, as musicians, too, um, we just, we need to have many different life experiences in order mm-hmm. to bring that into our music. And mm-hmm. taking classes outside of music is, I think, very, very helpful for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Totally. You really uh, get to expand your horizons. <laughs> yeah, expanding your horizons. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that is definitely, I think, something that we all need to practice as musicians because it is easy to kind of like you know like have this kind of tunnel vision staying in your own bubble like Mm -hmm. oh music 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 which is great you know Mm -hmm. but (laughs) yeah anyways expanding your horizons definitely so now i kind of want to talk about the difference between smaller and larger music schools and i think Mm -hmm. we're able to talk about that since um we have UCLA as the example of a, a little bit of a smaller music department mm-hmm. versus um, USC is a pretty large uh, mm-hmm. music school within a university. Mm-hmm. So I want to hear from your side first, Mindy. Mm-hmm. What would you have to say about UCLA being a little bit of a smaller school? Like, what do you like? What do you not like? Um, wow. Yeah. Um I mean, I guess I have nothing to compare it to because I've always been at UCLA. Go Bruins. <laughs> but uh, um, I definitely liked – there are definitely more pros for me than cons uh, being at a smaller school. Mm-hmm. Um, I just felt like I was really taken care of um, taken because care it's of? like – yeah, because it's a smaller school and you really get a lot of attention. Um, and, you know, most of the teachers, even admin, know you by first name, uh, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um, and they know your situation. They they actually know things about you. Um, mm-hmm. And so they can help you, you know, in very personal ways. Um, and also just like you pretty much know... Like, if not everyone, like, I'd say you've at least seen everyone and, like, know by first name basis, like, 85 to 90 percent of the students there, you know, mm-hmm. um, which is nice because it feels like a community and, like, um, like a nice family, you know. Uh, yeah. Of course, there are some cons because it's small, you know, it feels like high school sometimes where, mm-hmm. like, things spread around quickly and... <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, but I think that's inevitable um, when everyone knows each other. Um, But again, I think there definitely are more pros for me than cons. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the main thing is I really felt like I got the care and attention that Mm -hmm. I needed. Um, And I don't know. I mean, what, what is it like at USC, like being a larger music school? So yeah, and definitely you you don't know like most of the people. It's it's very mm. common to kind of go around and not really realize like mm. not run into the same people, which was yeah. very interesting that transition from UCLA where, you know, like you just like you said, you would you basically know like 90% of the people. Yeah. <clears throat> and so it was, it's really strange not knowing, like not knowing who's practicing right next to you, you know, um, <laughs> just in piano alone. Like at UCLA, the pianists, there were only about 24-ish. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah, yeah. You know everyone. Um, at USC, there are way more pianists, probably like yeah. closer to the 100. I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe not. I remember I don't know. like... When I would ask you um, about certain pianists at USC, like, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I really, like, I haven't heard of them or I don't. And it's just, like, because for me, I've been at UCLA. And so it's, like, like you're saying, like, you know all the pianists, so you know exactly who's practicing next door because you know what everyone is playing. You know what everyone's playing, exactly. (laughs) And, okay, in a way, honestly, that's sometimes intimidating because, um, because, like, you just, I don't know, it just starts to get, like... I feel like there's a weird kind of competition that arises in mm-hmm. a smaller kind of environment. That is true. You know? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why I feel calmer when I when the person next to me, I don't like I don't know who they are and mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, their yeah. progress. I don't know. It's really weird. No, it's no, a, no, it's that a makes weird sense. kind of phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. Um and yeah, and another thing, I haven't like experienced my first recital yet at USC, but I feel like um th- the like if you were to post a recital poster you're not likely to get 
the same kind of turnout as you would at UCLA because I feel mm-hmm. like since more people either know you or have heard of you by your name Mm -hmm. um like people just kind of go into like random recitals if there's a recital going on at um i don't know lanny hall even though it used to be jam popper i still am not used to that (laughs) um yeah i feel like people would just kind of like drop in you know yeah like i i've I've had the experience of having people um that i'm not like like i just feel like at usc it only your really closest kind of I see. Friends and family are likely to attend, mm-hmm. um, which is a difference that I won't get to experience this year. <laughs> Aww. Really. Um, also, building at USC, basically, you you practice in one space and then you have to walk 10 minutes to get <laughs> to your lesson place or yeah. to your other classes. There are several music buildings. At UCLA, there's basically one, kind of two connected. One. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everything is one place. Like, you know, you, you can finish practicing a minute before your lesson and then hurry over. That is, to your... yeah. That, that was nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And reserving pianos is another thing. Or reserving um, practice rooms. Let's say, yeah, mm-hmm. that's another thing. Because at USC, uh, you don't reserve practice rooms. You kind of just oh, really? come in. Yeah. Well, oh. they're starting to introduce a system Mm-hmm. right now because of coronavirus i believe oh and i think you can reserve if you're a teacher if you're teaching students but mm-hmm. just to kind of practice uh no one reserves rooms oh, wow. so yeah you kind of come in it's like based on luck <laughs> whether you get a room <laughs> that day or not you don't I really see. get to choose which is kind of interesting because it's like oh like i get to meet a new piano today Aww. um <laughs> oh, yeah. it's different. you guys have but, you way know, at, more at UCLA, rooms yeah, at UCLA, mm-hmm. you kind of get attached to a certain room. Yep, me. <laughs> and you always want to. everyone. Y- me too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. how I was too. Um, and you always want to practice in the same room. Yeah. And then it's kind of like when you don't, you you feel off. You right. Know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So there are very many pros and cons to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, totally. We'd love to hear what anyone else's experiences have been like. I wish for this podcast we could have like brought people on to like I know, that would chat have been... with us about this. That'd be Maybe really we fun. should do something like that in the future. That'd yeah. be fun. Yes. So anyways, let's go on to just kind of talking about in general things that we have learned either mm-hmm. through our music lessons or just being mm-hmm. in college. Just go ahead, say anything, spit it out. We're <laughs> we have an open floor wow. here. Wow. <laughs> I mean, where do I even begin? <laughs> Um, you just kind of alternate go back and forth okay yeah um if I, like if i were to tell my freshman self mm-hmm. like go back um i think one of the most important things i would say first of all is how fast college really does go by like everyone says that yeah, but it's, like, true, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like when I was at that age or at that stage, like, I, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I know it goes by fast. But, like, mm-hmm. while you're actually in it, it doesn't feel like mm-hmm. it, you know? Um, But, but now after, looking look back, back. Mm-hmm. yeah, like, now looking back, I'm like, that was six years? Like, wh- what? Like, even just, like, my <laughs> master's, like, two years, that was, like, nothing. <laughs> that was, like, that just went, like, really just zipped by. And I think... Mm-hmm. Um, I would have, yeah, told myself just to really savor it and enjoy it while it lasts and to take advantage of, um, just like everything that you have while you're a student. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah, what are it's some just things like, that, mm-hmm. um, what are some things that you wish that you had done or taken advantage of that maybe you didn't? Um, one thing I think is like, like seeking professors for, uh advice like not not Mm -hmm. just like not even about music just about like life Mm -hmm. in general um i totally agree yeah because i started doing that towards the end of my time just because i was like especially when i was like figuring out what to do um after i graduate and things like that and i was just realizing like how many professors and teachers are so open um and Mm -hmm. um willing to talk to you to sit down and And talk to you about fascinating people Right, yeah, and you they know, have so much to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're professionals, and they've gone through mm-hmm. like so many, so many um, experiences uh, that we can really learn from. And I wish I had done that like earlier, you know. 
Yeah, um, honestly, same. Yeah. Anyways, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. All right. Um, let's see. So yeah, college is quite a time. Um, it's really a time to like kind of like you know figure yourself out, and I think, um, I wish that I hadn't spent so much time being caught up in what I think that other people or professors expect from me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because I feel like I tend to kind of do things um, because I feel like that's what's expected from me or I yeah. feel like um, you know I need to do it in a certain way because of that and, I, and at that point it starts to not really become for myself <clears throat> mm -hmm. and I still struggle with this now but I think it really t I had to kind of learn that over the years and mm -hmm. um the thing is professors like they know where you're at and they right. um they're there to help you grow and mm -hmm. sometimes it may seem you know like professors can seem scary like they're demanding they want things from you but yeah. really ultimately they really just want to see you succeed and they want you to grow right. and i just really wish i kind of had been more relaxed about it and trusted mm -hmm. in that um and I know it's hard, yeah. it's scary when you first enter college, you know, everything's so new. Right. Um, but really just, like, doing doing what you love and doing it for yourself mm -hmm. and taking what everybody else says as, um, not as bad criticism, but as something that is just going to help you. Right. Time in college is honestly the time to fail and get all your mistakes out. Um, yeah. And I remember, yeah, there was a professor who said that and um, they were like, literally, like, if you if you fail on stage when you're performing, like, this is the time to do it. You know, you don't want to be mm -hmm. doing that when you're a professional. Right. Um, but right now is the time to do it. And so mm -hmm. it, it literally does not matter what any one person might think of you or or you're playing. Um yeah. This this kind of relates also to studio classes, which I wish I had taken uh, more advantage of or been more open mm -hmm. towards because mm -hmm. I think um, it, it made me nervous a lot of the time and it makes a lot yeah. of people nervous, you know, like Definitely. just getting up in front of your peers for some reason, it can be even more nerve wracking than an actual mm -hmm. performance sometimes. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, guess what? The more you fail, the more you pick yourself back up again, the better you'll end up. And there's yeah. actually this um, quote that I came across and that I love and it's basically the master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried mm. um and That's yeah good. I just I really just would hope that anyone who is entering um music school can keep something like that in mind yeah because it's so it's so easy to get caught up in um in your thoughts and in your right. mind and in your um yeah you know not wanting to make mistakes but yeah it's essential too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with studio class. Um, I also feel like that's something I wish I took more advantage of when I mm -hmm. had the opportunity. Um, yeah, it really wasn't until just this past quarter, like my last quarter. Um, online. I mean, of course, everything was online, yeah. But yeah. I did play every studio class that we had. That was the only quarter oh. ever that I played every student class that we had. And, like, I wasn't even prepared. Like, I really wasn't. It was just because I, I mean, a lot of different things. My recital was coming up, but also, um, yeah, anyways, um, I, I just played every studio class. And even though I didn't feel prepared, I really felt in that past quarter um, the impact that that did make on me mm -hmm. um, as a performer and as a musician and just the way that, you know, um, even, like, I listen to music. Um, mm -hmm. because actually like, like you said, playing for your peers can sometimes be even more nerve wracking than playing for like, <laughs> like yeah. a group of, you know, random people that you don't even know. Um, but actually like they're your peers and they also mean well and they want you yeah, to do well. They're exactly. there to support you. And, they're um, there to it's help. just, yeah. yeah, it's just a nice feeling to know that you have a group of people, um, like that, you know, um, that are there to encourage you and there to give you feedback and you're just there to help each other. And um, I think, yeah, just learning to take every opportunity you have, whether it's studio class, whether it's just like like how you and me, how we do um, run throughs for run each throughs. other. Like that honestly was really helpful for me. Um, I mm -hmm. was really 
like not against it, but I was hesitant towards it um, in my younger years in college Mm -hmm. because I was like, I don't want to present anything uh, that I don't feel (laughs) like completely comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, like, like again, taking every opportunity you have and every opportunity um, is a learning experience, whether you're prepared or not. Um, Yeah. Anyways, I think that is definitely something that I would tell my freshman self for sure. Uh, Shall we talk about um, the, like, application process or basically what is important to keep in mind if you're thinking to kind of apply Mm -hmm. to music school? Basically, let me just say this. The audition is the most important thing. (laughs) That's true. I would say. Yeah. Um, Of course, everything's important too. But, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the audition as in basically they want to see your potential and your love for music. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like, you're not there to kind of show off or win any competition. Mm -hmm. Um, You're there to show that you have material to work with and that you are eager to do so. Right, right. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not a professor in a, like, at a music school or anything, but, you know, like, they're also trying to find someone that they think they could, uh, offer something to you know like they're not Mm -hmm. here to try to like pick out like oh like all the prodigies like the best students because like i think the thing about uh deciding where to go to college and picking a teacher like you really have to find the perfect match because that's the most important thing i would even say not like yes the school is important because that's the environment you're in but the most important thing is finding a teacher that you can really click with um and Mm -hmm. that you can you know uh can give you what you need and mm-hmm. I think one very important thing that I think everyone should do before um, attending a school is even before your audition to contact the teachers there or teacher that you want to study with and set up a lesson with them either before or after your audition um, just to get a feel because because you might not like their teaching style, yeah. you know, and I don't know, just like it, it's a process, but really like going uh, doing your research and talking to other people and um, figuring out what's the best match for you. Um, mm-hmm. I know like a lot of people talk about, oh, I want to go to this school. or Oh, I want to go to that school, which yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. True. But really, it's about finding that perfect teacher for you because mm-hmm. that's the most important thing, um, especially as performance majors. That's what you're there for. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, especially for like something like like I know we're mainly talking about like your undergrad uh uh experience but even like for masters like it's only 2 years that's a short amount of time and if yeah. you're stuck with a teacher that maybe you know you don't necessarily click with you know that's just 2 years and then it's gone mm-hmm. just like that you know so yeah anyways i think the most important thing for sure is finding a teacher that you know um will be good for you and uh you feel like um you can feel comfortable with and things like that yeah i think for this reason uh music festivals are important because Mm -hmm. you get to experience a lot of different teachers and teaching styles and maybe you'll find the teacher that'll be right for you like i Mm -hmm. i just i know like i've I've personally experienced and other people i know have as well like you'll you'll come into a um a lesson and then you'll find out that both of you kind of click and then they'll be like oh audition for my school yeah Um, you know like that happens very often and so Mm -hmm. and i've and we've also experienced people who go to festivals specifically to um like meet a certain teacher or to get into their studio you know yeah and yeah i think that's it turns out to be very effective Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah being proactive about that process is very very important Mm -hmm. yeah And another thing um, sometimes people wonder about are like AP classes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I feel like. Um, And so we have, like, how many AP classes did you did you take? Like two. (laughs) Like two. Um, So there, yeah, there's a wide spectrum of people like you don't need to take AP classes, like Mm -hmm. if you want to go into uh, music school. Uh, However, um, like in my experience, I've taken like quite a few and because I wanted to do a double major, I think it was mm-hmm. helpful in that it got a lot of my um, class requirements out of the way. And so mm-hmm. I was able to kind of be more to take like additional classes and not have to kind of bust my schedule um, yeah, and like still be able to practice and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's just like there's no 
it, it really just like there's no answer to <laughs> Right. There's no one answer. Yeah. There's no one answer to that. Like, you don't have to take AP right. classes, but like, if you do, it also can be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess going back to things that we, that I wish I had known, uh, slash like the things that I found most valuable out of my college years, um, as something that like, I think, not even for musicians, just for everyone. It's like a good life skill um, for me is learning time management. I think like <laughs> time management was really like all of my biggest breakdowns in college had something to do with my lack of time management or just like not really? knowing how to manage my time. Yeah, because, um, you know, things get busy, like really mm -hmm. do. And, I mean, yeah, it gets really stressful. Yeah. And, you know, music piles on and, you know, you have like performances lined up and then it, it like as an undergrad you have a lot of other classes to take care of as well and like it can get very stressful and overwhelming also just like moving out of the house for the first time and you have to like take care of yourself it's just like a lot you know it's a lot mm -hmm. to adjust to um but I think like for sure time management was like one of the biggest lessons that I had to learn um just like knowing how to prioritize my time and what to prioritize because um I think for me, it, I get easily like overwhelmed and stressed out. And then I just like don't know, like, even though I know I have all these things to do, like, I just end up being more stressed and mm. anxious about it. And like, I just like don't even know where to start. And then I'm just like wasting time because I'm just like freaking out about it, you know? Mm. Um, and anyways, I mean, with time management, it's like, it's, it's one of those things again, where it's like, it's like case by case, like you have to figure out for yourself, like, um, what works best for you. And, um, but definitely for me, that was like the biggest thing I learned in college. I feel like, um, just like, like learning that some things just aren't as important. Um, yeah, and you know, cause true. I, I was slash still am like very perfectionist and like, I want to do everything to like the best mm -hmm. of my ability, 100%, but sometimes you don't have time for that. Like you really don't. Mm -hmm. And so just like learning how to prioritize and letting yourself know that it's okay to like, you know, some things like it just, you just have to get it done. Like just do the best that you can and you just have to get it done. Um, but learning, yeah, the what's important things that you can kind of put aside for the time being, um, for sure. That was like the one of the biggest lessons that I learned throughout college. Yeah. And then yeah. for me going on the kind of opposite side of the, I guess, spectrum, I don't know. But mm -hmm. um, uh, I had to learn that, like, I had to learn why taking breaks is essential. Like, yeah. I literally had to learn to schedule breaks because, I mean, mm -hmm. I have a tendency to kind of um go 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 yeah as you, as you said before yeah. and i can honestly like not even realize that um sometimes i overwork or i have a tendency right. for that mm -hmm. and i literally had to like it, it just i had to learn through so many failures basically yeah. that mm -hmm. why like taking breaks is important and mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think though like it's okay one one thing I learned for sure is like it's okay to fail. I feel like every time I mm -hmm. before when I'd fail, I'd feel super just like disappointed in myself and just like, you know, like, oh, yeah, like, too. why did this happen or blah, blah, blah. And like, what did I do wrong? And sometimes it's not necessarily like that you did anything wrong. It's just a part of life. Like we have to try things and fail yeah. in order to learn and um or it might lead you to something else too. That exactly. is always something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, oh, something I was going to say is, um, about prioritizing things. I had to learn it the hard way, but after six years, uh, I realized my top priority has to be my health, no matter what. Oh, yeah. Oh, my um, gosh. Same. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's easy, so easy to miss meals, lose sleep, you know, because I need to practice mm -hmm. or I need to do work and blah, blah, blah. But, like, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything, you know? And exactly. I really had to learn that the hard way. Um, I'm I mean, still learning that. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard because, like, we're passionate about what we do. So it's easy to kind of push those things aside. Um, but, like, I've missed 
some really important auditions because I was literally just like sick in bed and couldn't move. Oh my gosh, for, like, I know, I remember that. Yeah, because I was just like pushing myself to the limit because I was like preparing for yeah. certain things and like at the end I couldn't even do it because like I couldn't even get out of bed, you know? And like same thing, like I mean you guys all know this, like my injury, like it's been ongoing for the past five years and that's because I didn't take care of myself initially, you know, because I was like I need to practice, yeah. I need to, you know, go, 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 <laughs> you know? And <laughs> yeah, and I know. You know, it's so easy to overlook taking care of yourself. And, but, anyways, health, health is top priority for sure. Yeah. My mom always has to remind me because I always forget. Yeah. It's so easy to forget because, you know, we like what we do and we want to keep doing it. But, yeah. 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 Another important thing I learned is that, honestly, you yourself are your best teacher like Mm -hmm. not to depend on anyone too much yeah like Mm -hmm. professors and teachers are so important they're they're there to guide you right but ultimately you are um the one kind of teaching yourself too and so yeah um, yeah kind of just learning that it's like it's like that um what's it called like that pro or what's it called oh my gosh the fish like teach you can teach teaching the fish (laughs) and then basically like a teacher can either give you fish or they can teach you how to fish oh and it's more valuable to be taught how to fish rather than be given a fish yeah yeah actually that is true i think um a lot of I think just like the way I was brought up and things like that, um, I really depended on uh, someone telling me what to do mm-hmm. or like how to feel about a certain, <laughs> you know, but but really at the end of the day, like you're your own musician, like you're like you have to be able to make those decisions for yourself and find your own artistic voice. Like, yeah, that's that's what makes music special. You know, we've talked about this many times, but we all have something to say. And I think more importantly, more importantly like we have to rather than you know making sure you you check off every every single thing that someone else wants you to do of course you know we have to respect our teachers and understand that you know yeah. they they do have more experience and understanding than we do and they're there to help us they're never there to you know to to jeopardize us in any way of course mm-hmm. i'm not saying that but but more important than you know trying to make sure oh i need to do this 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 like find your own artistic voice you know that's Yes. I think that's the most rewarding thing and um cuz what is music if you can't you know like how are you how do I say this like we're we are artists and artists should be able to make their own decisions um and so I think yeah it's it's the most valuable thing is just um like you said we are our best teacher and figuring out how you want things to sound and um also like yes you know there are certain technical things that we all need to go through uh learning how to you know position like hand position and things like that and like there's certain things uh, that we all have to go through like some sort of training but at the end of the day something i learned is like we all have different like we're all built differently Mm-hmm. We all have different size hands, different shapes, and like mm-hmm. at the end of the it's day, not a one like, size fits all. Exactly. Solution. <laughs> yeah. So you have to, you do have to figure out what works best for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes, like you can't, like you can't wait for someone to tell you that because sometimes you won't find the answers there. You mm-hmm. know. And so. another thing is, you'll come across a lot of, I think, difficult decisions in college where. For instance, um, you'll have different like coachings with different professors, and they all say different things. And so you're like, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, gosh, like what do I do now? Okay. You can't listen to all <laughs> like you know they could be contradicting sometimes too. Yeah. And you really just have to figure out what what works for you, what you think sounds best. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And I mean that's not even just in music in in everything in mm-hmm. college. You'll just there are just a lot of like difficult decisions. I think that you are kind of forced yeah. to make yeah Yeah. i yeah again like we're not advocating for you to not listen to other people and what other people are telling you especially your preference listen to them take what you right but take what you um uh resonate with exactly yeah it's you don't have to feel like things are set in stone at all it's music it's supposed to you know Mm -hmm. um it's 
there, there's no one answer. Um. <laughs> <laughs> My teacher right now, she even said an interesting thing. She has this one student who kind of like she'll tell him to do something and he, he'll be like, but why? Like, mm. I, I think it's I think it's better this way. And she likes that because she likes that kind of like back and forth that um uh like she can see that he's thinking about what he wants and it, and if, yeah. if a lot of the times like professors if you can convince them that yeah. what you're doing um sounds good they will be more than happy to like you know hear that out and let you <laughs> do right. it yeah because at the end of the day it's your music you know mm -hmm. yeah and i think you grow the most that way too when you're constantly thinking and analyzing like what you want something to sound like you really mm -hmm. you really grow musically and yeah and artistically mm -hmm. yeah which is great and i think the most important part of going to music school yeah yeah that's true <laughs> oh i miss yes. being a student <laughs> Oh my gosh, we'll go back to school. Yeah, one day. Enjoy your time while you're not in school in the that meantime. Is true. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's quite a lot, too. Yeah, I'm excited for so, it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. let's move on to our tune of inspiration. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so, <laughs> should, I, should I introduce the piece first or like talk a little bit about why I chose it? I, I don't know, up to you. I have no idea what's coming. <laughs> Okay, so I was just kind of thinking about what one of the pieces that helped me kind of grow the most musically was throughout um, my, mostly my undergraduate college career. <laughs> We're just delving back into Schubert sonatas right now because oh! I decided to choose Schubert's Piano Sonata number 16 um, in A minor oh. um, <laughs> because I feel like it honestly it was one of the pieces that I learned a lot from. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna play a little bit of the beginning and I actually wanna share two excerpts because um just just a little second excerpt just because I think it's important. Okay. But I'll start with the beginning for now. <laughs> okay. the first ex excerpt oh, so that. yes that is the opening of the piece um and so that's a good recording yeah it's the one i always listen to i love it so Alfred much Brindle. yeah oh, Brindle, so the, king the first yeah the first time i heard someone play a schubert sonata was at a piano festival i attended in high school and that was the first time i ever like even knew that schubert had composed <laughs> um mm -hmm. sonatas and i was like oh my gosh like whoa what is this this is so intriguing to me mm -hmm. anyways and then in college of course mindy you um you kind of re-inspired me with um I schubert sonatas schubert. yes i know you do mindy okay guys mindy is going to become a schubert expert i oh my gosh i'm no, saying it here say first that. no don't yes i know i <laughs> <laughs> and you <gasps> yes so I really wanted to kind of take on learning one during my time at UCLA. And the thing about Schubert, which I think we've talked about before, is that the notes 
on the page seem like they would be simple, but mm -hmm. musically it is very challenging to pull off. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right yeah totally and, yeah and so with this sonata um i mean the opening it has like it opens with these unison octaves and i remember i was just it was really difficult for me to really kind of figure out how to do it because um in order to like how how with unisons are you supposed to kind of create like this i don't know um this kind of atmosphere and mm -hmm. and I just, I remember it was always, I would always feel very tense kind of starting mm -hmm. out. And so I had to really learn, um, musically wise, I had to learn a lot by practicing that section. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the silences as well. That's, I think, one of the most difficult parts. Um, mm -hmm. There was someone, do you know who it is? Someone said that there is more music in silences. Mozart? Was it Mozart? I think so. But... I think so, yeah. I I had always heard it. I've I've always heard like my professors telling me that, but I don't think I really fully like understood understood mm -hmm. what that meant until I came to this sonata because it's like all of these you know sections they're just going and then all of a sudden there's like this silence and it's yeah. like you need to have something there and it's like how do you yeah. connect that previous section to the new one? Exactly. Um, Very prominent in Schubert's music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so. Yeah, that um that was definitely something very important to keep in mind with this piece. And okay, mm -hmm. I just want to really um I just want to share one little tiny excerpt just a couple of seconds mm -hmm. um from the second movement because I think another thing about Schubert is the juxtaposition between like like this kind of playfulness and intense grief, which yeah. is it, it can just be insane in his mm -hmm. works, right? Mm -hmm. Um so there's this part in the second movement. I will just play that. second movements are the best like sometimes i feel like even just like within each sonata sometimes the second movement is the weightiest movement for me like mm -hmm. the emotional content is just like oh it like so really difficult. kills you oh yeah yeah that part i just remember like every time i would play it and i would just like i don't know in my heart there was like this oh. ping yeah. in my heart <laughs> yeah anyways i just wanted to kind of ask you um what are some of the challenges you would say of playing Schubert or? Oh, wow. Um, I think you touched it. Like, it, it's not... Most of Schubert's music isn't highly technically difficult. Um, but it's really just... The emotional content is so deep and really requires a certain level of maturity, in my opinion. Um mm -hmm. And yeah, Schubert's music can, or his sonatas in particular, can be really lengthy. And I think one of my challenges uh, for sure have been just co the continuity, like how, like you, you talked about it, just yeah. the over, like you have to understand the, the overarching structure and um, like there are sections that he'll kind of cut off ab abruptly um mm -hmm. but then like how do you connect that to the next section and anyways like yeah. things like that like continuity i think is a big thing and just understanding sure. um the the musical uh aspect um and i think something that actually we don't talk a lot about in schubert is just like the colors actually mm -hmm. uh because i think one thing, I mean, I don't know what he could have done with the instruments that he had back then, but just for me, 
something that I find really special about Schubert's music is just like the different layers um, that we find in the music, but also like like experimenting with colors to kind of bring out um, something special in each section. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think, again, that comes with a lot of experience and also understanding who Schubert was as a person um, is very important too. Um, Because like you said, like he, he often juxtaposes um, something really light and playful. And then suddenly we enter into this like dark. I always, I always describe Schubert's music as, um, you know, where sometimes you're in the midst of a storm, but then suddenly the the kind of peering through the clouds, you see this beam, this ray of sunshine Mm -hmm. peering through because I think inwardly, that's just who he was as a person. You know, he didn't live a very happy life. I, I, I give this spiel all the time, but like, <laughs> you know, like Schubert, he was sick for, 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 for a lot of his life, and he knew that he wasn't gonna live for very long. But f- for some reason, his music can sometimes sound incredibly just like simple and lighthearted and pure, yeah. and just like that's 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 what makes his music so special for me and. Um, I think it's sometimes just chilling to think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think within that pain for him to be able to write something like that, um, you can even tell even even in the brightest sections in Schubert's music, there's something that's not quite there. It's it's still a little bit off. Yeah. Um, anyways, I, I just think his music is fascinating in that way. And um, understanding that and understanding um uh, his life and the things that he was struggling with, I think is a big thing in, in learning his music and playing his music well as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Would you say that everyone should attempt a Schubert sonata? <laughs> of course. I think Schubert's music is amazing and everyone, you know, I think a lot of people play, of course, Beethoven, Mozart, Haydn. Uh, Schubert mm-hmm. is kind of less performed, but I don't know. In my opinion, he's one of the greatest, so... Mm-hmm. I think everyone yeah. needs to attempt, and you know, not everyone likes Schubert, uh, which I, I can know. understand. But regardless, he's amazing. I love Schubert. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> yeah, for me, I personally like when I take a look at classical sonatas like Beethoven, um, Mozart, Haydn, mm-hmm. and then if we consider Schubert. Like, I would hands down prefer to play Schubert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I know that many people have different feelings and opinions. Mm-hmm. So I think that we're at the end of our episode six. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Um, I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. We're still amidst a pandemic. It's like getting worse and worse. What is going on? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. (gasps) So wear your masks, um, everyone. Be safe. Yes, please do. If you're going outside, if you're hanging out with people, at least wear a mask. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully we'll get out of this soon. Mm -hmm. And until next time. Hopefully, sorry. Hopefully one day you guys will be able to see us do a podcast together. Like oh, in the yeah. same room. And that's that is the dream. Oh my goodness! <laughs> for this podcast, I'm yeah. gonna manifest it. I know. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, we will someday. One day. One day. Wait. Yes. In the meantime, um, we can't wait to talk to you guys next time. We hope to have an interesting topic for our next podcast. Mm-hmm. And until then. And, Keep and on practicing it, happy. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Please give us any like topic suggestions if you guys want us to yeah. talk about anything. If you or, have any like burning like fire inside yeah. of you for something that you think would be an interesting topic, like please yeah. just tell us. Um. We are actually all maybe views. yeah maybe we can do like a poll on Instagram. Yeah. Maybe there. we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, yes. Until then. Keep on practicing and happy practicing. Yeah, happy practicing. Happy practicing. Stay safe. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.